Hi, this is Steve with Jetters Northwest and the subject for today's video is electric powered jetters. We're going to talk about the purpose they can serve you and then some of the limitations of running an electric powered jetting machine. The primary application or purpose for an electric powered jetter is really doing small indoor drains. Uh, the beauty of running these indoors is of course they can just plug right into a 115 volt wall outlet. Um, we aren't running a gas engine or diesel that's going to create fumes and just something you can't do indoors. Uh, since they run off basically smaller electric motors, there's a limitation to their PSI and their GPM. Like this is pretty typical 1500 PSI electric power jetter that we build. Uh, it's got a horse and a half motor so it draws less than 15 amps on electrical service. Uh, there's also other jetters we've done and, and others do that are two horsepower and they'll draw around 20 amps. Uh, basically, they are maximizing a 115 volt circuit and anything really bigger than these really needs to be 220 volt. So their primary application is laundry lines, uh, lavatory lines, smaller drains. Um, they're not going to have really the power to deal with larger drains or you know cutting out roots or something like that. Like that. Uh, but you can clean out some grease with them and definitely soft clogs and they're very handy in the fact that they're nice and compact, easy to get around, and you can take them right up to the drain and get jetting. So I often get asked, why can't I get an electric jetter that does 3,000, 4,000 PSI and you know, five, 10 gallons a minute so I can get some serious jetting done? And the answer is you can. The trouble is it's gonna to have to run off 220 volts or even maybe 460 volts. What do I mean 220 volts? I mean, like if you're gonna run that in a residence, you'd be having to run off the plug for their dryer or for their stove. And that's just really not very convenient for sake of jetting. And even in that, it probably will only give you the amps to maybe double the output of this. Um, to give you an idea of amps, just a five gallon a minute, 3000 PSI jetter would be 10 horsepower. And in that, that's gonna draw at 220 volts about 25 amps. That's only five gallons a minute, 3,000 PSI. If you did 10 gallons a minute, it would be double that. So it gives you an idea of why there aren't really a bunch of 220 volt electric jetters out there. Now, we have done a number of them for industry. Um, we've done an eight gallon a minute, 3,000 PSI several times, uh, 10 gallons a minute, 4,000 PSI. We even recently did uh, one that did 5,000 PSI at I think 10 gallons a minute. But these ran off 460 volts. They're for industrial applications where they have that kind of power. And you're really just not going to run into that kind of power availability in your typical commercial building or residence. So again, that's why 99% of electric jetters out there that you'll see are going to run up 115 volts and be in the 1500 PSI range. Like I said, these electric jetters can be real handy for these easy indoor drain jetting jobs. But one complaint I hear guys say a lot is, Oh, I hate that electric jetter because every other time I try to use it, it trips the breaker on the wall. And what do I mean? Well, this jetter, this motor for this jetter draws about 13, 14 amps under full pressure. And we have a 15 amp service here. Well, let's just say that the circuit is already being used by other stuff that's drawing three, four, five amps. I'm not going to be able to get my 13 amps out of it. So when I fire up and start jetting, I'm going to trip the breaker. That's what these guys are having happen. So there's ways around that. And the easiest way is having an adjustable pressure regulator on the jetter. Basically, the more the pressure, the more the amps. And they're almost equal. Like for this one at horse and a half, 1500 PSI is gonna draw about 15 amps. If I go down to 1100 PSI, I'm gonna draw about 11 amps. If I go down to 500 PSI, I'm gonna draw five amps. I can make this thing run if I can back it off far enough. Even though 500 PSI is not much, it'll probably blow a hair clog out of the way and I'm, at least I'm jetting and I can sell the job and I can take care of the customer and I can keep moving. Now, another thing you can do if you have trouble, sometimes just turning the switch on to start it will be too much amps because the majority of the amps are at startup when the motor is just trying to kick over. So another trick is to just back the regulator way off to almost zero pressure, go ahead and start it and then dial it up to whatever pressure you can get to. So some of you guys that already own machines or if you get one of ours with the adjustable regulation, hope those tips will help you out, allow you to get in there with these handy electric jitters and get jetting. Thanks for watching.
Again, this is Steve Jones with Jitters Northwest. Thanks so much for watching today. Check out more of our videos on our YouTube site. Just search Jitters Northwest. And check out our website, jittersnorthwest.com. Thanks again, and happy jetting. Thank you.